so once again a warm welcome to my dear students so in last video session we were discussing about the root that is morphology of plant in that we are dealing with the vegetative part of the root and today also we are going to continue with the vegetative part alone that is today the topic is stem so we know well about the stem actually the stems are always aerial that is they grow above the soil that is the stems are always a positively geotrop positively phototropic so once again i repeat the stems always grows above the soil and they are positively phototropic so now my question is what is a stem so what i said early was the character of a stem so my question is what is a stem because there is a lot of confusion between the stem and the shoot so stem is entirely different and the shoot is different a shoot constitute <coughs> leaf branches and flowers whereas a stem constitute a stem alone that is stem is a green part of the plant which is the ascending part of the plant so stem is nothing but the ascending part of the plant it rises from the plumule region of the seed so today in this topic we are going to see what is stem character of stem function of stem and the modification of stem so first we are going to see what is stem so as i told you already the stem is the ascending part of the plant which rises from the plumule part of the seed so now we are going to deal with the characteristic features of the stem the first point is stem is as i told you already stem is an aerial part because they grow above the soil why they are aerial because they are positively phototropic that depends upon the tropism so in tropism the plastid also plays a vital role in case of root the root is always positively geotropic that is it grows towards the soil whereas the stem grows above the soil that is towards light since the stem possesses a plastid called the chloroplast so plastid also plays some role in tropism so the first and foremost point is the stem is an aerial part of the plant which developed from the plumule region of the seed and next the stems are usually phototropic that is positively phototropic and negatively geotropic that is they grow away from the soil so they are negatively hydrotropic that is they won't absorb water so stem bears the important feature is the stem bears buds nodes and internodes so these are the, the main feature of the stem so the difference between stem and root is the stem bears nodes and internodes whereas the nodes and internodes are totally absent in case of root so the special feature of the stem is possession of nodes and internodes and bud so the stem is often described as the main body or stalk of a plant so we know very well the major function of the stem is conduction or mechanical strength that is the stem possesses all the organs of a plant to possess a two functions one is called as a primary function and the second one is called as a secondary function so the secondary function is done only with the help of modification so you might get questions only from this modification part so the stem and characters of stem function of primary function of stem is a preliminary part so uh, neat uh, according to neat in neat point of view you might get questions only from this modification that is secondary function of the stem so the primary function of the stem is the first function is conduction and next one is mechanical strength so the stem gives a mechanical strength to the entire plant body so they are often described as a stalk of a plant and second function is conduction that is conduction in the sense xylem and phloem extends from root up to the end of the plant so conduction both xylem and phloem do the function of conduction that is xylem conduct what uh, phloem conduct food uh, food so next so now we are going to see what are the different types of stems uh depending upon the shape next ma'am so depending upon the uh, texture the stem is broadly classified into strong stem weak stem and underground stem so strong stem in the sense they are erect stem which grows above the soil so the strong stem is further divided into excurrent deliquescent caudex and culm whereas weak stem weak stem are often described as a climbers so this weak stem is further divided into trailer cleave creeper and climber so weak stem in the sense actually the stems are somewhat cylindrical in shape in case of strong stem that is erect stem whereas in case of weak stem the stem <coughs> at the tip region becomes thin and wiry 
So these stems are called as a weak stem. It is further classified into trailer, creeper and the climber. In the last category is the underground stem. It is further classified into rhizome, tuber, bulb and calm. So now we are going to see strong stem. Previous slide. Man. Strong stem. Next. <coughs> types of stem okay so now we are going to see erect stem that is strong stem so the strong stem or erect stem grows above the soil and the shape of the stem is somewhat a cylindrical in shape or rod shape so this erect stem is further divided into codex skull deliquescent and excurrent so first we are going to see codex so what is codex so this is an example for codex and this plant is often described as a cycus this is called as a cycus so for codex the stem is somewhat cylindrical in shape without any branches the stem is cylindrical in shape without any branches and the foremost feature is it possesses scars of fallen leaves it possesses scars of fallen leaves so example for that is cycus and the second example is coconut so in coconut also the stem is somewhat cylindrical it is not having any branches and they possess some uh, mark that is fallen leaf mark that is called as a scars of fallen leaf so coconut is another example for this uh, codex palm is also another example for codex so next comes so this is an example for codex next coconut is an example for codex next next comes the culm so culm is the second type of the erect stem or strong stem so here so this is uh, obviously you know this is bamboo so this culm stem possesses a special feature so as i told you already stem possesses nodes and internodes so this is called as the internode this is called as a nodal region and this is called as the internodal region so here this internodal region in case of culm the internodal region is hollow whereas the nodal region is solid so the inter once again the internodal region is a hollow the nodal region is a solid so culm is a type of stem it is also grows above the soil the shape of the stem is also cylindrical it is also not having any branches but the special feature is the internodal region is having hollow and the nodal region is solid so this type of stem is called as a culm stem so example for this is bamboo so next you might also think sugarcane is also an example for culm the only difference is so here the internodal region is a hollow whereas in case of sugarcane the internodal region is not a hollow so that is a basic difference so next deliquescent so deliquescent probably daily we are viewing some of the plants so that belongs to deliquescent that is most of the angios forms belongs to ex deliquescent so deliquescent in the stem that the tree grows outward from the several main branches and have strong lateral bud the main feature is the main stem is the main stem possesses so many branches so so far in case of codex and in culm there is no branches so here is also the stem grows above the soil it is also cylindrical in shape but the feature is it possesses so many branches so this is called deliquescent for deliquescent example is a mango tree neem tree and the jatropha carcass in tamil it is called as badam tree so many examples are there in deliquescent branching so next <coughs> excurrent so excurrent excurrent that is excurrent example is christmas tree often we call this as a christmas tree that is conifer so this uh, conifer tree comes under excurrent so here the stem is also aerial but without a branching so here apical dominance apical dominance tall first and the suppresses wide then grow example pine tree so here uh, branches are not branches are not produced due to apical dominance that is branching is suppressed due to apical dominance so for example of excurrent is a pine tree there is no branches so this is the main stem there is no branches straight away the leaves are formed so this is an example for excurrent somewhat a cone shaped that is called as excurrent so next this is an example for weak stem so as i told you already the weak stem possesses a thin slender wiry texture so the stems are very weak it needs some object to hold otherwise it used to creep so actually this is an example for creeper 
it is called as the, uh, the plant name is Evolvulus tribulus. In Tamil, it is called as a Nirinji mul. It is an example for creeper. Next. So this is an example for aerial modification that is Manoranjitam Arthropotrus. So actually it is a hook climber. See how the hook is formed. It is a hook climber only with the help of the hook it holds the object. Otherwise it gets a support with the help of this hook. So this is a hook climber. Example for this is Arthropotrus. In Tamil it is called as Manoranjitam. So next we are going to see the modification of stem. So modification of stem comes under the secondary function of the stem. So the stems are modified to perform secondary function. It is further classified into aerial modification, subaerial and underground stem. So first we are going to see subaerial modification. Subaerial in the sense half of the stem is submerged in the soil and the remaining part above the soil. So this is called as a subaerial modification. So this subaerial modification is further classified into runner, stolen, sucker and offset. So first runner. Runner in Tamil it is called as a runner in Tamil it is called as a od thandu. That is the stem runs to some distance. That is called as a runner. So next comes the stolen. Stolen is also a type of runner. Example for stolen is oxalis. So runner in Tamil it is called as odutandu. So next chrysanthus. Stolen example is oxalis and chrysanthemum. So runner, a pumpkin. So these are example for runner. So next comes the sucker. Sucker in Tamil it is called as a it is called as a kurut, for example, banana plant. In banana plant, you might have seen so too many so, uh, too many little plants around the main branches. So this is called this is called as a sucker. In Tamil, it is called as a kurut. That is the main branches underground inside the soil, submerged inside the soil. The branches rises from the internodal part, uh, internodal part which is up, uh, which forms above the soil. That is called as a sucker. Example for sucker is banana. Then uh, rose, vade kurutu in Tamil. So offset example is offset. Offset the very good example is pistia. So here the internodal region is a shortened and it is and it becomes thick. So at the nodal region the leaves are formed in a rosette form. Rosette form in the sense just like a petals of uh, petals of rose. So the very good example for offset is pistia. Next. So next we'll go to the underground modification. So probably we have seen many stems that are uh, uh, we have seen many stems that grows above the soil. Whereas in case of underground stem, it is entirely different. Actually, this underground stem is also known as a that is some stem undergoes a period of pernation. So to tide over unfavorable season, some of the stem undergoes a period of pernation that is called underground stem. So this underground stem is further divided into rhizome, tuber, comb and bulb. So now what are the characteristic features of underground stem? So this underground stem is a very most important for need that is the underground stem stores some reserved food material that is a peculiar feature of the stem because in order to tide over unfavorable season the stem used to remain under the soil in a dormant condition dormant in the sense sleeping mode that is uraka nilai it uh, this dormancy period exists up to some days also and up to some years also that depends so so underground stem special feature is they store large reserved food material and the second second excuse me and second feature is they possess scaly leaves so the scaly leaves gives a protection and the reserved food material supply nutrient to the plant till it till its onset another peculiar feature is this underground stem possess nodes and internodes actually this underground stems are very thick and succulent succulent in the sense of fleshy so succulents are given to those plants which are fleshy actually underground stems are very thick and succulent uh, because it store reserve food materials it is having scaly leaves and also nodes and internodes so this nodes and internodes on the onset of favorable season it will develop into a new plant so these are the peculiar features of the underground stem in that first we are going to see rhizome so example for rhizome is ginger ginger the binomial is gingibere aphysnalis once again the binomial for ginger is gingibere aphysnalis and the second example is turmeric curcuma 
So these two are example for underground stem. So the type of stem in a, a, a turmeric is rhizome and the type of stem in a rhiz, uh, stem in ginger is rhizome. Next <coughs> comes a tuber. Tuber, is, a tuber means a swelling. So tuber is also a modification of underground stem. The very good example is potato. So potato is a modification of stem. So potato is a stem tuber. So you might get question dash or stem a modification dash are example for modification of stem examples are ro uh, carrot radish beetroot and potato so the correct answer is potato since the rest of three that is carrot uh, beetroot and the radish are example for root whereas uh, potato is an example for modification of stem it is called as a stem tuber a tuber means as i told you already it is swelling so this uh, tuber possesses i that is axillary bud. So axil possession of axillary bud is a peculiar feature of the stem. So this axillary bud gives rise to IF potato. So this IF potato highly supports in vegetative propagation. So next comes comb. Comb in the sense it is also a vertical underground stem. So in case of comb the stem grow grows below the soil in vertical manner. So they are called as a vertical underground stem. Example for this form is Colocasia, that is Chenai Kilangu, Alocasia, Alocasia Chamber. So these are very good example for comb. And next comes a bulb. So bulb is further, uh, two examples we are going to see in bulb. One is Allium Sipa, that is onion. And another one is Allium Sativa, that is garlic. So these two are very good example for bulb. The peculiar feature of the bulb is possession of scaly leaf uh, possession of scaly leaf that is in onion uh, you might see some uh, scaly leaf like texture so that is a special peculiar feature of bulb possession of scaly leaves so which gives protection so next aerial modification so aerial modification that is the stem that grows above the soil is called aerial modification in that we are going to see stem tendril stem thorn prickle who can filoclate so first we are going to see stem tendril so tendril is nothing but a thin wiry texture is called a tendril the tip of the stem is modified into stem ten, uh, tendril example for that is grape and next is stem thorn in some of the stem the stipules are modified into a thorn like structure so which supports in defense mechanism that uh, supports a plant to escape from enemies so that is called a stem thorn this thorn help in the uh, defense mechanism of the plant and uh, next one is a prickles a prickles very good example is roses and the hooks the stem is modified into a hook like texture example for that is artabotrys sometimes this hook also supports in pollination so the pollination in auto autobotrys that is a hook climber is by zoophily that is a pollination done by animals so because in autobotrys the stem is modified into a hook like texture so this this hook gets attached with the fur of the animals and the animals wherever it goes the pollination takes place so next comes the philoclade so here the stem is modified into a thin succulent texture that is called a philoclade example for this is open shea actually this philoclades are abundantly found in xerophytic conditions so usually the plant absorb 100 percentage of water and those 100 percentage of water are not utilized by the plants and nearly 90 percentage of the water is evaporated by means of transpiration so only 10 percentage of the uh, water is utilized by the plant so 90 percentage is waste so to avoid this in dry condition that is in xerophytic plants you know that is xerophytic plants the plants which grow in extreme dry condition is called as the xerophytic plants so in those type of plants the stem is modified that is the leaves are shed and the stems are modified into flat and succulent structure succulent fleshy texture so the succulent fleshy texture stores enough water so this because the leaves are shed there is no uh, way for transpiration so this water is utilized for the process of photosynthesis by xerophytic plants so in the in xerophytic plants the leaves are shed and the stem modified into a thick flat and texture called cladode so example for that is open shea and cacti so next actually this is amorphous amorphous that is a underground stem so the real stem is underground underground <coughs> which grows 
vertically. So this is our phallus. In English, it is called as elephant yam. Next. So this is a tendril. Actually, this is stem, branch of a stem. It gets highly coiled to form a tendril-like structure. So this a tendril supports in holding the object because the stem is not having it. The stem is not erect. So this stem could not stand erect in the soil. So this tendril supports to hold the object to withstand. So next. So this is an example for philoclade that is open shea. Thank you children. So next session. Thank you.